Okay. Okay. So um, I forgot to say goodbye, and then um, now here we are again. We are back again. Um, look at it. Look on the screen. You see that we are looking at the world. Maybe some of you have been seen the world before. This the world. <laughs> now I'm sure everyone has. But the reality is that as engineers, we should understand one thing. If all my designs are on a flash sheet of paper, then it's a wake up call. Do you know what I'm saying? Please, what's your name? Isaac. Isaac. So Ike, you see, you understand what I'm saying? If your world is round and your design on it, on it is on something flat, isn't it wrong? Do you agree with me? Let's be on the same page, yes. That is like the motivation for map projection. The idea is to look at the world at a certain scale. Because you see, at a certain scale, we don't care. On a smaller project site, we can assume that we are working on a certain datum, okay? And the datum, of course, a constant value of height in your working. But anytime you bring in the concept of map projection, think about coordinate system. Why? Because your GPS is supplying you with longitude and latitude. Are you okay? Now, this longitude and latitude can only be associated with a round surface. Longitude and latitude, you can't associate the longitude and latitude with a flat surface. Are you okay? And so it's important, even if you are not going to be working, building a, a huge infrastructure that crosses Ghana into Togo. You see, in that case, then the curvature of the earth will come in. But even if you're not doing that, you need to know about map projection so that you can understand the conversion from one coordinate system to the other. Did you get, did you get this point? Yeah, I hope you get it, yeah? All right, great. So please, just put that in your mind that coordinate systems and map projections are linked. They are very much related. Are you okay? It's a direct connection between the two. Okay? All right. Maybe during the lecture, I may not have the time to do it, but around it, the coordinates that we can put on it will look more like this. I think when you even look at the one on the board, you see that the equator cutting through it. Are you okay? Right. So now the latitudes are just suspended from the center of the earth. Okay. So this angle is what we call this, we say 52 degrees north. Are you okay? All right. It means this latitude is actually that distance from the equator. Are you okay? That's the equator, it's okay. All right, you should understand all these basic things. All right, you don't need to know it like in you know, so detail, but you see at the end of the day, if your project site is actually somewhere here, where the intersection is, okay, then you know that your latitude and your longitude have intersected. We, have, we can plot it. If there's some treasure there, we can find it. Okay, just using the longitudes and the latitudes. But once you're using longitude and latitude, look at how we are able to obtain the 50 degrees north. It's actually with respect to the center of the earth, and it's actually a line that is on a curved line on the surface of the earth. And that's how originally the earth is. Are we on the same page? So you don't use these numbers anyhow, put it into, and you are converting longitude and you're doing this and you're ignorant. One day they will arrest you. <laughs> now you understand what I'm saying? You go before some Ghana, you know we like those things. Very soon there's an issue. Then someone asks you. So we, why are we using these numbers? <laughs> And I said, oh, we told you this guy is fake. Are you with me? Meanwhile, you are not fake. Just that when you're in class, you never understood what we're talking about. Guys, when we get here, we will learn about how this round earth will now be transformed to become a flat surface. Are we okay? Because 
that transformation from longitude to latitude to what we call the projected coordinates, example being the universal transverse Mercator, we will look at that, how that is done. Is that okay? It's not complicated. Also, remember one thing as an engineer that we have the in planimetry, your design can be in planimetry, but there is the elevation of the structure that you are putting at IOK. There is an elevation. If you are putting up a project on top of a mountain, then that change in height has to be factored in. And the reference is to what we call a datum. Is that okay? So that will be handled here as well. Are you okay? WGS84 is the model of the earth. Every engineer, it's about model. It's not about looking at the earth and say, oh, look at the sea. No, no, no. You're just not going to get emotional. Are you okay? You're just going to think about, okay, how can we approximate the shape of the earth? Are you with me? And how are we going to factor in the radius of the earth into it? With me? Are you okay? And then we're going to just explain some of the concepts. Are you with me? We talk about the universal transverse Mercator. I was just sharing a joke with the class I just left. And I was telling them that in the exam, I once asked a question about, and this goes to those who are online who are actually sleeping and they are saying they are online. Are you okay? All right. So they didn't cut the person didn't come for lectures, Ike. And guess what? He went to the exam and then I asked a question in UTM and it seemed he didn't have a clue which part of the notes, where it was. So naturally, what would you do? You go to Google, right? And when the guy went to Google, UTM, he was getting this result, universal uh, motus and mama. He just wrote that <laughs> as an ask. You know, and you know, I actually went to Google and I typed, and that's exactly what came. And I was like, uh huh. You see? Okay. I don't want to say God has punished you. God has punished you. rewarded you. All right. So, but we will talk about the UTM. It's okay. It's a very popular system. So, you see how the projection links with the coordinate system, right? Okay, wait, so we'll deal with that. Not only are we gonna just keep to these, so, so far all the things I've talked about are fundamental to um, fundamental principles when it comes to GIS. But we'll now look at network analysis, for example, that, okay, now let's take it further, are you okay? If I'm to represent all my roots by lines, okay, I collected that data. So I have center line data for all the roots in way at Wager right now. What can I do with it? Are you okay? One of the things I should be able to do as the mayor of this town, Wager, is to then say, okay, we shouldn't have you know congestion, traffic congestion. So I want optimal routes. You sit down, you analyze. Are you with me? All right. In case of there's an emergency, the sea is so close to us. If there's a tsunami and a sea is coming, I'm just not going to sit down and take my phone and just get it live on Facebook. I'm just going to sit down and I'm going to say that I know exactly where we should exit because I'm the mayor and I know the technology. Are you with me? That GIS can be used. So we will look at network analysis. We'll find out that it's possible to determine the shortest routes. We all use Uber. So when I say shortest routes, you know what it is. Now, it's possible to do other analysis on the network. Are you okay? Like create what we call isocons. Are you okay? So we're going to use some heuristics to solve problems like the traveling salesman's problem. Are you okay? All right. So that we make life better. Are you okay? Make the world a better place. I feel like singing. No, I'm going to do it. All right. So I basically will look at network analysis. Okay. We also look at surface, 3D surface rendering. Are you okay? I'll tell you what 3D surface rendering is about. It's about being able to represent a surface. Okay, so we start by defining what a surface is, okay, and get to know that the definition of a surface is just being able to represent all the you know data, okay, within a certain extent. Okay, every single one of them. Once we're able to do that then we have a surface. So if I take this room, for example, the extent of this room, okay? If I want to represent a surface, every single point should have a value. Are you okay? So one of them will be, let me just say the tile, okay? 
but I can have a temperature surface in this room. What does it mean? If I had a chemistry or anything to measure temperature, what I could do is that I could just go to the corner and measure the temperature, come here, measure the temperature, te measure the temperature, and then I'll be able to now create the surface by doing what we call interpolation. Okay, so when we get there, that's what we'll do. We see how we create a surface, okay? And then we see how we say, like more or less, we can generate the surface, right? Normally, that's what you do. But what we know as a surface is this the surface of this thing. <laughs> that's it. But you see what I'm talking about? Even the surface of this table, we realize that every single point we have a value. What's the value? We have a color, don't we? Yeah. The color. Or the presence of the wood itself defines the surface, doesn't it? All right, so if there's a hole in the middle of this table, then we don't have, that part is not, that's not part of the surface. But like, we'll, we'll talk more about surfaces, surface, 3D surface rendering, okay? And then um, what else? I think basically that, that's that. It's going to lead us to 3D visualization. Um, maybe you just touched on that. But we also talk about view shed. View shed. View shed is also like 3D surface analysis. Um, we want to understand, for example, as I'm sitting here now, the areas that I can see. Eh, that's my view shed. We will look at that. It's linked to what we call watershed. But you see, for water, water finds its own level, but we don't have to wait for it to find its level. We can literally say that if it were to rain right now, which areas should be flooded? That's watershed, literally. Are you okay? Um, it's not, I'm not even talking about doing a flood risk analysis. I'm talking about simply trying to find out where water will fill. If, if, I mean, have you seen one on TV before, Ike? You have. Have you seen a watershed of Ghana, anywhere in Ghana on TV? Ike, be, be honest, you haven't. Um, who, who showed it? With the, uh, okay, they did it. Did, did, could, did they foresee? Did they actually predict it? Yes. Um, they predicted it was going to. Okay, they predicted that. Okay, if they open it. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. So, like, that topic, when we get there, don't come for it. So, you understand? <laughs> okay, so Ike here is telling us that he actually has seen watershed analysis being done for was it wager the dam here that is good okay all right i want to see but i think i would like to watch more movies <laughs> okay that's good that's good that's very good now that will bring us to the practical once we're done with that topic we're going to do a practical if you say you want to do it online, it's up to you. If you want to do it face-to-face, -face, it's up to you. What I know is that I'll give you the marks you deserve, okay? All right, but this is what's going to happen. I can hear again. Oh. My best friend is here, so please hold on a second, okay? Everyone, let me just pause the recording from the introduction. Okay, you follow me. You just love it. Okay, I says he understands the course, so we will end the lecture soon, okay? It's too easy for him. Okay, so um, guys, we do the practical. Get your laptops ready. Install Quantum GIS. Because this one, I don't want you to install a GIS. Quantum GIS is what we need. It's quicker, it's faster. Could have used that, but... Quantum GIS. We use this for our tutorial. Okay. I've taken attendance for this class. Hey, it's going on. I should have copied it. No, I didn't copy it. In my mind, I was thinking it's going to be there. So is the class going to be mad at me if I say they should do it again? <laughs> the, the video, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's also not bad, isn't it? I see. That's also not a bad idea. I think I'll do just that. 
Like you are very good. Okay. I think that's one of the quickest way. Except if someone is using their a name that is not related, but yeah, I got it. Augustine, Chris, Christopher, Dehamel, George, Isaac Morgan, Miguel, Mark. Okay, that's that's very good. Okay, so yeah, I'll work with that. Thank you. So let me just paste it somewhere. Okay, guys, so attendance, I shouldn't forget to. Or maybe I should just take it on the WhatsApp page, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And I'll add you. Or you can go and type your name. Let me just add you. I'm just, you're, you're even there. Okay, oh, okay. So, ah, so it's 11. I made it 12. So it's 11. I made it 12. I now forgot you are still part of it. Okay, that's a matter. Um, where are we? Tutorial, isn't it? Install the software. Don't wait till you know the last minute. Let me advise you. Don't wait till the last minute. They now installing it. Say it again. The link for the download. Yeah, if you want me to, I'll put it there. But I assume that you can just Google it and download it. You get it? It's, it's big. I can't put it there. So you just go Google, download QGIS. You just download it. It's okay. Or you can just talk to AIT. You can download it because you're pay school fees. <laughs> Don't mind me. I, I do that all the time. All right, guys, so basically, this is the course. It's okay. You score a very high mark if you just do your best. Do what I want you to do. And you just do that, you just be fine. It's all right. That's what, the same for every other course that you're doing. All right, so what we're gonna do is that I think in order not to just waste the time, we can even start by talking about, if we start talking about the applications of GIS. Maybe for just 30 minutes, then we close. Is that okay? All right. So please pay attention. You have a geographic information system. <clears throat> Excuse me. What, what do you think, where do you think we can use it? Can be used in the military? Not also. Okay. Can be used also in telecommunication. How would the military use it? It can be used in agriculture. It can be used in health. It can be used in civil engineering. Are you okay? Doing a, a big project is really huge, especially. Not some, I'm building some water tank. Are you okay? GIS will help. I have to be honest, <laughs> it, will, it will help. But if the project is, the more complex it gets, the more GIS, and especially the more, not complex in, in, in the sense of the building and functionality, but in terms of the extent, are you okay? It's huge. There are projects in which you never meet some of the people who work on the project because you are in a different section of it. And you have to travel to even get to the other side. And it's the same project, you know, and we can use GIS to manage that. Are you okay? All right. So we can apply it to civil engineering like that. Okay, we can apply it to um, agri in what we call precision agriculture. Okay. So precision agriculture, we're talking about doing a Greek in a way that optimizes the yield. Are you okay? Your yield is optimal. So it's not lottery agriculture. <laughs> you can do um, a Greek in which you're just hoping that you get a good yield. That's not the type you want to do. Only the one in which we know definitely that we get in the shield. How do we get to know? Different soils support different crops. You get it? Uh, so if you had a system that put all that data in layers in order, we can tell that, okay, you should be planting this, okay, here. 
it could be you could also sit behind the system and then just say that okay you'll be working on this session i don't have to because the system has captured all the information and it's a huge farm to produce all the tomato that a northern sector for example needs so all, all you need to do is to query the system it tells that you need to actually go to the southeast portion of this and that's where you're supposed to be working normally when there's no information you see a lot of decision makers make mistakes they misappropriate and they get arrested are you okay all right so in agriculture we can have effective because precision, precise, and not anyhow type of project. Are you all right? So that's a typical one. Um, in telecommunication, when you're the network, you make a call, and the call isn't going through. How frustrating is that? Yeah. When the phone, the person you're calling is next to you, and they tell you the phone is switched off, and he's telling you, but it's, I'm sitting right here. Okay. If they've had an MTN of official standing here, you feel very embarrassed. And the reason, one of the reasons is because that the position of these masts that they put on there has to be done not arbitrarily. They have to be fixed properly to ensure that we have, you know, the signals are, you know, reaching the targets. Are you okay? And we can apply methods like the user analysis can be applied, okay, where we know exactly where the transmitter is, you know where the possible targets, you know, the clients are, so, and whether the signal will get you there. Are you okay? All right. So we can use GIS in that area, so telecommunication as well. Okay. You can use it in health to predict why, or to, yeah, of course, to do prediction to get to know why certain diseases are occurring. COVID is here with us. So we, 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 we can understand that. Social distancing itself is one of the geographical things that are used. Okay. One thing you should understand about GIS is that GIS is actually solving problems about anything around us. Why? Because geography is about everything around us. Geography deals with people, it deals with um, objects, it deals with phenomena. Are you okay? As I'm sitting here now, I'm having a very great view. Very phenomenal view over there. Are you okay? I see the sea, you know, and I see parts of it, patches of land. Are you with me? That's what where GIS comes in. All right. Otherwise, you see, it's sad that Castro disappeared. But see what I'm saying? All we are saying is that it's gone. Nobody's really doing any scientific thing to it and saying that why should that happen at that time? What were the waves like? What tides were? That's science. All right. Engineering is supplying science. Engineering is applying what science. Engineering is not engineering, as people call it. I've seen people say I'm an engineer, and they don't know what scientita is about. Are you okay? Yes, you shouldn't do that. You are not allowed. It's a crime. Okay, it's applying what science to solve complex problems. Are you with me? GIS is there to provide that knowledge so that we get to know what is happening in our world. Okay. There's this thing ahead. Um, ships that capsized because they didn't understand the coordinate system. Are you with me? So I've just touched on applications. What I'm doing is that I'm just talking about GIS. I, so I, if you want, people who like structure, I want you to be aware that I'm in the introductory part. I've done introduction of everything, but now I'm doing introduction of stuff. Are you okay? Like what GIS is? Are you okay? And that's what I'm telling you about. Try to understand it. And I know you do understand it. I'm doing my best here. So now we have to now look at how GIS is going to now help us solve the problems, right? And understand where people are, understand the weather. Are you okay? Understand if it's going to flood, we shouldn't just hope, like I said, that it's Kanish going to flood. People always say, well, they'll wait till the following year. Then they will now start doing the distilled. Please, you'll be shocked. We will distilled and it will still flat. Because we haven't seen any proper analysis. I don't know. Maybe some research has been done. But if it's been done, we haven't seen extracts of it. And if there are extracts of it, I haven't seen any journalists who have really called someone and say, oh, prof, 
what did you find in it? What was in your findings? Are you okay? Oh, we found out that even if we distilled all the, the drains, a crowd was still, you know, flat. And we all know that there was the program and then someone called in and said that the new directive is that you can't pay, you know, a certain percentage of your house. You are aware of that? You are aware there's, a, there's a, a directive that you pay for paving your house? Uh-huh. Me, I never heard about it. You know, and I was saying, well, based on what? So we need to analyze. Are you okay? Come out. Let someone come and say, these are my findings that water is able to see. All right? Over this percentage of land cover is like paved and this part is in paved and now it's going to seep in to the analysis. Are you okay? What is what GIS is there for? Are you all right? To solve real world problems. Are you okay? So geography is about everything. Are you okay? It's about in our world. Anytime you go stand beside the window and you look out, that's that's your world. But it goes beyond that, doesn't it? I think it's, it's only when you sit in an airplane that you now start thinking that, wow, so it's even bigger than I thought. Are you okay? All right. But I, I hear some people don't travel. I hear some people in Ghana don't travel, some particular people. You know, I don't like to be stereotypical, but it's like just to bring your attention to the fact that the world is bigger than you think. Are you all right? Okay, so anytime we hear about things like uh, speed train, mm, what comes into our mind? You have a project that is spanning the country, like moving from Kora to Tama. That is not like, like, you need to now start understanding the geographies. Are you okay? You're gonna be changing cultures by doing that, okay? So you just don't talk, all right? You need to understand your world. Are you okay to understand your world? What GIS is doing is that it's just modeling this world. And then, in fact, it's model set. Are you okay? Okay, those who are online, you can't see what I'm doing, okay? <laughs> I'm touching my computer, my laptop. Everything that we do within the computer that relates to the world. Are you okay? In other words, you don't always have to be, I keep saying this and repeating it, that you don't have to always be in a four by four trying to solve a problem. Mm -hmm. Then you have some motorcade ahead of you. Ping, pong, ping, ping. Where are you going to? Are you okay? You don't have to go anywhere. Sit behind your computer. Get some work done. Are you okay? Make some calls because there's a system to show you what is happening everywhere. Today, students don't have to come for lectures, right? Great. So that's it for you, systems. In 10 minutes, this session will end. I think I said this probably will be the last session, but maybe we'll do another 10 minutes. Okay? Let me close. It's okay. So when it when it ends, let me join for the very last time. We don't do breaks, so we will always end a bit earlier. It's okay. All right, great. So, gentlemen, there's no lady here, right? That's what we are gonna do. We need to. Uh, there is. And is she here? Pearl. Pearl, how are you? And who? I'm fine. So good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Where, uh, where is George? <laughs> In Ghana, when you say George, a, a man will appear, a boy will appear. <laughs> George, how are you? Except it's you should have let me see your face. Name, let me then see. a female will appear. I'm fine, yes. thank you. Okay. But anyway, um I want to come for a face-to-face -face class. Anyway, but I'm gonna ask all of you to switch on your camera soon. Is that okay? Because as part of yes. attendance, some people actually put, <laughs> they put mannequins. <laughs> Someone put a toy in front of the laptop and then you are sleeping on a couch. Yes. And so you all turn on your, my, your videos for me to take attendance, those online, is that okay? And don't put any toy in front of your camera. All right, so as I'm saying, we need to appreciate what GIS is. And once you get to know what it is, moving forward, you will follow what I'm talking about. Are you okay? That it literally means that everything, and everything means engineering as well. You okay? And looking at the geographical dimension of the engineering work that we do. Okay? Let me just give a simple example. There's a concept in 
She has called layers. Are you okay? That means that we can separate. I talked about it not too long ago. See, I'm bring, coming back to it. So if I were to layer, put all the information I have for my project area into layers for a road construction project, I could literally have the design also as a layer. Are you okay? And then I could now find my location and then see if I am actually too high or too low on the fly in real time. Are you okay? All right. So that is it for GIS. So what is GIS? What is it about? If I ask you to define GIS, how would you define it? If I ask you to just not define it, just tell me what it is. What would you say? Let's start with you. Everyone is going to have a say. Let's start with um, Ike. What would you say based on what I've said? What kind of animal <laughs> is GIS? Yes, I can only say. Okay, what's your name? Okay, Daniel, what would you say it is based on what you heard? You shouldn't have said anything to him. <laughs> what it is? Uh, he's coming to you now. So, Ike, let's hear you. All those online, when I call you, you mute your mic and you contribute. Is that okay? Okay. Okay. So Ike is here with us. So Ike, we we'll start. Ike, what is genius? You know, be based on all that I've said. What kind of animal is it? <laughs> I would say, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's like gathering information about uh, don't just gather information start with data is all don't try to avoid the word information all the time the information is not derived if you have the data are you okay and so try to so if you are extracting information you've gone too fast that you've ended it are you? but it's good it's good i like your contribution and your name again daniel daniel, daniel. Daniel, have your say. What do you have to say? Okay, that's good. I like that. You see engineer as a software. Okay, that's good. I like that. That how does it help you? It helps to put together data. That is very good. I like I like that. Okay. It's your own view. I work in your own view, so I like that. Okay. Um, let me see. I'm going to go in a certain order. Those online, um, I see Christopher's mic is unmuted. So, Christopher, we'll start with you. Chris. Hello, sir. Yes. Hello, sir. Go ahead. Uh, but the letter I know is uh, GIS and is an application or a software which we, we use to gather a data which will give us the information that we need. This guy is just copying someone's answer. It sounds like someone's answer, isn't it? Oh, you know him, you know him. Ah, uh, okay. Then I think I think why why he said it relates to something that you said, isn't it? it, it this one is my it's my own definition. Of. Okay, but it's good. It's good, Chris. It's okay. Okay, don't get emotional, Chris. I can, okay. <laughs> I can also give an example. I can give an example of it because we can use the the GIS okay. in uh, like assuming if you are working in uh, Ghana water like this, mm -hmm. you can sit. You can sit in your office. Use mm -hmm. uh, the remote sensing uh -huh. to 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 get. Yeah, I'm listening to you, but hurry up, carry on. Ah, uh, you can you can sit in your office while mm. not going to the site to know all your your pipelines where there is a leakage of pipe Very and good. where there is uh, forty or. Uh -huh. I, I thank you so much, Chris. Because GIS good. in survey or GIS in engineering, it do it do a lot. Yes, it's, it's, you said it all. It's okay. 
You do all. Clapping for you. I want to. Yeah, I want to. It's okay, Chris. Thank you. Thank but, uh, you. I, I want. I wanted to ask some. I wanted to ask some question. Go ahead, Chris. Uh, so we, I know what I know is we have uh, QGIS and uh, ArcGIS. We don't want to go for the ArcGIS because that is too big. It's okay. So that's why we are avoiding it. QGIS should do the same job for us because now if I say people we struggle, they are trying to crack it. It's not working. By the end of the course. Nobody could. Are you okay? Because even we have the license somewhere and people can't even use it. Are you okay? So to avoid all the wahala, let's use the QGIS for now. Is that okay? The concepts are the same. If you understand that this is a layer, the only thing to do is find out how does this one do it? Is it clicky? Okay. Oh. Okay, guys, I know I was muted, but I'm back again. Um, why did it disconnect like that? I just didn't even get it. Thank you so much, Chris. Because of what Chris said, I'm not going to ask anybody to contribute again. It's okay. And I'll go straight and then we look at the definition of GIS. One typical definition of GIS is what we call the toolbox definition. Toolbox. And toolbox definition means there are other definitions, but we want to look at GIS from the point of view of GIS being like a toolbox. And what does a toolbox do for us? It contains tools. And these tools allow us to carry out something 